in the other game last night, the Philadelphia Eagles get off to their first 2-0 start since Carson Wentz was a rookie. That's how long it's been, which makes that, what is that, about eight years now, 10 years, 30 years, whatever it is. Carson seems so damn old. But they are 2-0, <laughs> and Jalen Hurts had a great night last night. But I'm not buying into it. I'm not buying into it yet. As good as the Eagles were yesterday, a product of that win was how bad Kirk Cousins was. Oh, my gosh. Three interceptions, a fumble, which they didn't lose, but ended a drive. And they had ample opportunity driving on three different possessions inside Eagle territory. And all three times, Mr. Interception threw an interception. Now, going into the game last night, the rhetoric online and amongst fan bases was, do you buy into the notion that some guys just aren't primetime players. Some guys can only play Sundays at 1 o'clock, Sundays at 425. Kirk Cousins in his career on Monday night is 2-10. Two 2-10. And ten. Two and ten. 17 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and he had three more last night. So, I ask you, Mr. Football Player... At some point, <laughs> the stats are there. Maybe Kirk Cousins should never play under the lights because he was terrible last night. Look, he he was bad. He was bad. But I think it was it was a cum, culmination of he being bad, his receivers dropping balls. Uh, Justin Jefferson did something we hadn't seen him do. He clearly ran the wrong route, and Darius Slay gets an easy interception in the end zone. So, like, it, I just hate to think that Kirk can't get it done. I know what the stats say. Yeah, I mean, and they're I'm right there. They're right, they're right, he, there. right there. And it even says here, worst Monday night football record in but, NFL history. It is. With a minimum of 10 starts. <laughs> but, Kirk Cousins, you stink. But I you refuse, let me down. But I refuse to just let this be about Kirk. This was about Jalen Hurts. You just, like, brushed over that because you didn't want to address – uh, what oh, they should look I like. Because you, 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 you made it known yesterday. <laughs> I don't like Philly. Yeah. I hate Philly. I don't like Philadelphia. Nothing good comes from Philly. It's they well, pretzels and water ice. That's all they have. Pretzels well, are from I, Philly. He's not from Philly, but no, he's my wife's Philly. from Philly, which means my kids by proxy are half animal. <laughs> <laughs> I own it. That's fine. I have no problem. And I worked in Philly for five years. I know exactly what I'm talking about. You people are animals. That being said, I give you listen, you're two and oh. You're thrilled right now. You guys have Super Bowl dreams. Let me dash them for you now. You're not winning a Super Bowl, but congratulations on being two and oh. But as good as Jalen Hurts was, and let's be fair about it. The big question mark for the Eagles this season was how good is that kid gonna be? Because they're loaded around him. They've got a good offensive line. They've got depth at wide receiver. They've got running attack. They're very good defensively. The question mark was, young quarterback, how good is he going to be? I agree with you on that, Greg. Jalen Hurts has answered every question thus far. He makes every throw. He's good with his legs as well, scoring two touchdowns yesterday. But it's hard for me to look at them the way I look at the Bills last night. The Bills dominated the Titans, and the Titans had nothing to do with it. The Bills were just that good. I watched last night's game, or at least part of it, because I only have one TV, and the NFL decided last night that I had to choose. <laughs> it's like choosing between your children, all right? Which was like it? Sophie's Choice last night. <laughs> you got one game, and granted, it's a blowout, so it was easy to turn the Bills game off. And then you got the Eagles game, which was much more competitive. But why the NFL ever decided... To put two games on Monday night at the same exact time is baffling to me. And oh, by the way, they announced that next year they're going to do it three times. Thanks, NFL. <laughs> like, I want more of your product, not less of it. But back to the game for a moment. How do you counter what I'm saying? That if Kirk Cousins plays better last night, that's a much different ball game. Look, I... I'm going to go out and re revisit what I said a while back on another show. Kirk Cousins is my dark horse MVP candidate. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on. You laugh at it. Woo! But if, if he Hold can on. get... Are you appearing at Gotham Comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a comedy show that I, I am notes not. about? I am not. He has the pieces. He just has to be consistent. You, 
You showed us or told us the stats yeah. on primetime games. He is not good when it comes to the spotlight. If he is not in the spotlight, he's a really good quarterback. For me, how I counter that is Kirk Cousins and the Vikings just did not show up. They got beat by a team that did show up. See, I disagree with you on that. I think they showed up, but in big spots, driving the ball down the field, you know, on the Eagles 30, on the Eagles 25, he made bad decisions. He did, but when I say d didn't show up, you're looking at spots and moments. But yeah. defensively, they had mental lapses and breakdowns. They played zone in a cover two shell all, all, all evening, and Jalen Hurts was picking them apart. Everyone was open. They were getting the hat on the hat. They couldn't get off blocks defensively to get tackles and uh, eliminate the big plays. Like offensively, they weren't in sync. They couldn't get they couldn't get Dave, uh, Dalvin Cook going. Right. So it wasn't just about Kirk Cousins. He missed some throws. Um, he missed guys running open at times, but guys dropped the ball. They just weren't there like they were week one with the Packers coming in. Yeah, town. and to be fair, I don't want to overreact to just one game. It's on the road. It's Monday night where historically maybe Kirk just not good. I don't know if you're actually putting stock into it, but the record is what it is. At some point, you, know, you are what you are, right? It's your Bill Parcells line. You are what your record is. But it was disappointing because – you know, you leave that game, and now the world's saying, wow, the Eagles are really that good. And I, I give the Eagles credit. They're a very good football team. And Jalen Hurts now, two weeks in, is proving anyone that doubted his ability wrong. He can play at the NFL level, and he's the reason they're winning games. But I, I watching last night's game, to me, was as much about the Eagles doing good things, uh, great attack all over the field. Uh, obviously, uh, he ran in for two scores as well. Defensively, Darius Slay with a couple picks. And frankly, they could have two or three more interceptions last night. And I sometimes get in the habit, and it's a mistake that I make and a lot of fans make, where do you credit the team that played well or do you look at the team that didn't play well and try to lessen how good Philly is? And I know that sounds convoluted, but was last night's Eagle win more a product of Philly being really good or Minnesota's offense just not being what we think they are? Well, it was both. It was both. Last night, it was both. We saw it clearly. Jalen Hurts looked great. He looked decisive. He made throws. He made, he made exceptional runs with his legs. In my opinion, he's the best quarterback in that division. Eat with a healthy well, Dak that's Prescott. Not saying that much, right? I know I mean, better than Cooper Rush and I Daniel understand. Jones. But everybody, I mean, I'm on that list. Everyone's high. <laughs> everyone's high on Dak Prescott. Yeah. But Jalen Hurts, he's proven that he can be the leader of this team. He's always been a great leader. It was about what can he do as far as putting the play, the the leadership into motion. And, and throwing and making the throws in the pocket, extending the plays, being special. He was that last night. However, Kirk Cousins and the Vikings, they did not show up. I and that's what's disappointing because when you have them as a dark horse, you yeah. kind of silently <laughs> need them to, to make, you, See, that's make the you feel good. You don't want to be embarrassed with your preseason pick, which frankly is embarrassing. <laughs> and I'll say this, as much as Jalen Hurts looks like he's the real deal, and I take nothing away from that kid's performance, to be the best quarterback in the NFCs today is not saying a lot. It is like being the tallest dwarf in the circus. Big deal. You got me by a quarter inch. Like, you're better than Carson Wentz. You're better than Cooper Rush. You're better than Daniel no, Jones. No, like, don't throw nobody. Cooper Rush in there. <laughs> to, to make, to make, no, yeah, yes, he's better than Cooper Rush, but I'm not talking about Cooper like Rush. Like, he's not running home saying, Mom, guess what? I'm the best quarterback in the NFC East because his mom's going to say, there are no quarterbacks right now in the <laughs> NFCs, but I'm proud of you, son. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.